Welcome in. It's time for another Sunday set piece here on the SDH Network. I'm Jason Longshore and really excited for you to take the time to listen to this next conversation. Our own Madison Cruz had a chance to chat with U.S. Deaf Women's National Team Captain Kate Ward, originally from the state of Georgia, very excited about the U.S. soccer relocation to the city of Atlanta, and especially all of the additional support that the U.S. extended national teams will receive. Kate talked to Madison about her journey, about her pathway in the game, and why she believes it's so important that everyone has a place in this game. Please enjoy the Sunday Set Piece interview with Madison Cruz and Kate Ward. All right. So, Kate, I mean, first of all, I want to start off with just your story with the U.S. Women's Deaf National Team. How did you get started and get your foot in the door to be a part of this club? Yeah, so um, I I was born hearing, um, and when I was four years old, my parents found out that I was deaf in one ear and hard of hearing in the other. Um, and then when I was six, I uh, was walking down the hallway one day, realized that my hearing aids weren't working very well. Um, so we went back to the doctor and I lost all of my hearing that I had in a month. So then I got a cochlear implant, um, which basically stimulates hearing. Um, and luckily for me, it's allowed me to live in the hearing world per se, um, play on hearing soccer teams, go to hearing schools, all of that. Um, and so I grew up like playing normal soccer, um, with teammates who did not have um, the same, I guess, lived experiences that I did. But um, for me, the soccer place, the soccer field was always a place for me to just be normal. It levels out the playing field for everyone. Like it doesn't matter if, you know, I can't hear them as long as I can score goals or make good passes. Um, So, yeah. And I think I fell in love with soccer um, right around the same time I lost my hearing, which I don't think is a coincidence. Um, And so Um, when I was 12 years old, one of the deaf men's national team coaches saw me playing in state cup and he saw my hearing devices and he went up to my coach and my coach told my parents, um, the women's team had just won the gold in 2005 in Australia. So this was 2006. Um, and I was like, well, what do you mean? Like, I'm not deaf. Um, because for me, like being deaf with someone who doesn't wear hearing devices and someone who, um, signs. And so, um, that was kind of like, it was interesting for me to think like that. And then we decided I was too young. And so then when I was 15, um, it's when we looked into it again, I went to a training camp and two months later I was going to Taiwan for the 2009 Deaf Olympics, which was an incredible experience. And obviously it absolutely changed my life. So, I've been on the team for 15 years now, which is kind of crazy to think about. I mean, absolutely. And I mean, with the success that I think this team has had, it's so interesting to see you develop with the team as well, from where it started to now where it is, especially Mm -hmm. with the historic doubleheader you guys had, where you guys won against Australia 11 to nil, and then followed by the U.S. Women's National Team. When you found out that that was happening, what was going through your mind? What was your initial reaction to finding out that that you guys were going to be televised? Yeah, um, it was an incredible feeling. I think it was kind of took us by surprise. Um, I think especially because for the veterans, for us, like it was always about okay, we're doing this for the next generation. Okay. Like the next generation is going to get to do all these cool things and that's fine. Like it's been such a journey. I won't change a moment of it. Um, but for us in the last year to get to experience what U S soccer is about, it just kind of keeps getting cooler and cooler. Like, I feel like we're kind of riding a wave. Um, and so I was talking to two of the veteran players at the time when we found out and we were like, Oh my gosh, this is incredible. And, I think for us, um, it was really about, wow, this is such a huge opportunity to potentially change other lives. Um, We have a platform where, you know, who knows, like who's watching in the sense of 
um, there's another little girl or little boy who saw us wearing the crest and, you know, they have um, hearing devices and they realize, oh, like I could potentially do this someday and potentially it changes their lives. So um, it meant a lot of different things for us. It was really cool. And I'd also want to touch a little bit. You're um, an Atlanta native here from Georgia, mm -hmm. kind of representing your country, representing the where you grew up in this way, especially for the U.S. national team. Yeah. What does that mean to you to represent us Georgias or Georgians here in Atlanta as well? Yeah. Um, you know, I think Georgia is such a hotbed for soccer. Um, it's been really cool to see some of the players and teammates that I've grown up with go on to have professional careers or, you know, for them to play for the full hearing women's national team. So um, I feel like I was really lucky to grow up in Georgia and receive the resources and the coaches and the training that I did. Um, I'm really proud to be from the Peach State. Like, I love it there. And um, yeah, I think even cooler with U.S. soccer coming to Atlanta. It's awesome. I think it's going to be a huge opportunity for the city. And I think it's well deserved. Like, it's a soccer hotbed down there. So it'll be really cool to see it develop. And uh, you mentioned it, the national training facility coming down here, it mm -hmm. being in your backyard almost, what has it been like just to have that sort of influx of how many people are acknowledging that Georgia is a hotbed for soccer, especially because we all knew it. We all knew it, especially being here. But now that it's like grown into what it is now, what has it been like for you? Have Has people talked to you a bit about what it's like growing up here and living and growing into the soccer field here in Atlanta? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, like you see, Atlanta United come in and took the city by storm. Um, I was there for the opening game, and, like, it was so cool um, to see all the people packed into the George Tech Stadium. Um, and just to see, like, that continuity of the fans continuing to go. I look forward to the day when the NWSL or the Super League finally gets a team here. I feel like that's going to be a hit for us as well. Have a feeling it's coming. Um, fingers crossed. Um, and then for U.S. soccer to make its way down here, I think, you know, so many of my friends and people that I've grown up with who play soccer or who are soccer fans are super excited about it. So, yeah, I mean, I'm proudly from Atlanta, like I said. So um, I think it's going to be cool for us to be even in more of the spotlight from U.S. soccer, but also like with the upcoming World Cup, like it's going to be awesome. I was also at the inaugural match, too. Yeah. So I said that and I was like, I was there, too, with my family. So yeah. it was it was so cool because cool. I think it's so interesting because, you know, growing up, especially I think from a women's standpoint, you know, mm -hmm. when you're in rec and you play all this time, when you get to rec, it's really only beforehand. It was just national team. It was yeah. very difficult to find like a club level to play at or, you know, you go to college and that's kind of how you get into the national team pool. Yeah. Growing up and seeing that kind of switch and having those professional teams, what has it been like to watch this new wave of women's soccer really develop? Yeah. So I actually, I'm a college coach now. I coach at High Point University in North Carolina. Um, and so to see the development um, from when I graduated college to now of how many more opportunities there are for women is amazing, whether it's domestically or overseas. I think the NWSL continuing to grow and then the Super League growing. Um, I just think like for a lot of girls and for a lot of like people around our age growing up, like the ultimate goal was to play college soccer and that was it. Um, and it's never been like that for boys. Like you see men go to college and like their only goal is to go play pro. Like it's not to go play college. And so now we're seeing girls go to college, my players that I coach now and say, Hey, I want to play pro after. Um, I feel like that's a really gratifying feeling and a really deserved feeling. Um, obviously the equal pay stuff has been huge. Um, and, you know, again, you see U.S. soccer and U.S. women's soccer kind of leading the way in that and kind of pushing for that. So um, I just think, like, what a cool time to be a part of women's sports right now. Absolutely. And you did mention you are a coach and you're also one of the captains on this team as well. How would you say that coaching has kind of helped you fulfill more into that leadership role or likewise vice versa? Have you noticed a, a jump in what you noticed beforehand in your leadership skills and how have you kind of taken bits and pieces from both on the field and also off to kind of help you with both roles? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Um, almost transitioning from one role to the next. I think um, as a player coming to being a coach, I do think um, it allows me maybe to 
relate more to the players that I have at high point um, and to understand kind of maybe what they see or what they feel. Um, I think that it has given me a unique perspective as a player in maybe why coaches make decisions that they do or why they're doing training a certain way. Obviously I don't know the full con like context of all those things, but, um, and then I watch a ton of film, so it's made me a lot better player. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. I think one of the coolest things though, is being a coach, um, obviously being a player with the deaf team and my roles within the deaf world, the, the disability community, the soccer world, um, a lot of it's DEI and it's inclusion and it's growing the game. And um, to be able to bring that back to high point where um, I'm lucky enough that I get to run a lot of the culture and leadership stuff. Um, it's super cool to get to bring those lessons here. And like, I have that lived experience. So like to share that with my players and um, share why inclusion is so important, not just where they are now, but also in life um, has been really, really cool. So it's been fun playing both those roles, I guess. And you you bring it up a little bit too. I feel like when you think of extended national teams or any sort of extended team, mm -hmm. you automatically think, I think of the game as a little bit like different, but mm -hmm. really it's the same. It's the same with the CP team. It's the same with mm -hmm. the deaf team. It's the same all over. And so- mm -hmm kind of trying to break that stigma, what has it been like to really try and change the the message around when people do talk about these extended national teams? Yeah, I think like over the last couple of weeks, the last month since like the game was announced and, you know, we started to get to promote it. Um, what we said over and over has been like, I hope that people see our ability more than they see our disability. Um, and it's not that, I think one thing that I want people to realize is just because we do things a little bit differently doesn't mean that, you know, we're not as intelligent, as talented, as driven, as successful, um, whether it's with the deaf team or any of the other extended national teams. And you know, I also think like we're really fun to watch. That's something that I said about my team a lot. Like we have a lot of fun together and I think it shows. Um, so it's been really, really cool to be a part of the ENT program over the last few years. It's been one of my favorite parts of my career. So to get to grow to the other forms of the game has been really special. Um, so yeah. My last couple of questions for you, you mentioned some of your fun moments. What Do you have a fun memory of ha having some time with the deaf national team? Do you have any fun memories that you can share, whether it's off the pitch or on it? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, I think where my mind always goes with the team is one of my favorite parts about the team is when we give back to the community. Um, and we, every camp for the last couple of years, we hold a free clinic with the community. Um, and we advertise it out specifically, absolutely not specifically, everyone's welcome, but we want to get people who are deaf or hard of hearing, um, children and for them to come out and play and, and be around, other people like themselves and also for them to see role models like themselves. Um, so we've built a couple of really special relationships over the years with different um, young females who we hope eventually get to play on the field one day. Um, one of my favorite memories from this past camp is um, a couple of weeks before camp, myself and two of the other players, Cindy Andrews and Gracie, Fitzgerald, we met with a little girl named Zoe. Um, her mom had reached out to us and Zoe wears hearing devices and um, she wanted to Zoom with us. So we hopped on a Zoom call with her and she was, she's 10 years old. So she's going like a mile a minute. Like she was like, oh, like I did this in school today, blah, blah, blah. And then she jumped to like, you know, sometimes at school people make fun of me because I can't hear and like, you're like wiping a tear from your face. And then the next second she goes, oh, I love basketball too. Like blah, blah, blah. So you're like kind of riding the wave of her. Um, so then when I walk out to the field, she was the one who was walking out with me. And I was like, how cool is that? Like such a full circle moment. And then I hope someday she's able to do the same as a player. So things like that, I think are what stick out to me the most with this team. And my last question for you, Kate, is... um. You know, for anyone who's could be listening to this or reading this article, what is something that you want them to know, especially when it comes to becoming a professional athlete, whether they have a disability, whether they don't, what is your message to them who want 
to pursue this and be a professional athlete? Yeah. Um, well, I think first of all, everyone belongs in this game and everyone has a, has the right to be a part of it. And so, um, finding your place is really important, not just in life, but also on the field. So surrounding yourself with those people who empower you, um, is extremely important, whether you just want to play for fun or whether you want to pursue playing professionally or for your national team. Um, I think that who we surround ourselves with is who we become. And I've always been really, really lucky to be surrounded by people who lift me up. So, um, yeah, I think find your people and have them help you along the way, I guess. Thank you so much to Kate Ward, the captain of the U.S. Women's Deaf National Team, for speaking with Madison Cruz. And thank you to everybody at U.S. Soccer, especially Jeff Crandall and Tracy Messier, for their support in allowing us to tell this story. Plenty more Sunday set pieces to come over the next few weeks. Hopefully you are enjoying these and enjoying everything coming out from the SDH Network. Tell a friend. Make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe on YouTube as well, and follow us on your social media platforms at Soccer Down Here. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Mucha plata, y'all.